Hello, so this video is um, for three sample problems I put together, three problems involving E equals HF, E equals HC over lambda, E photon is EI minus EF, and the energy level diagrams. Um, so here are the reference table pages, oops, reference table pages, page one, page two, we might need both of those. Page three, we'll definitely need that. Page four, I don't think we'll need that. Page five, we'll need that. There are equations there. And then I don't think we need page six, but there it is. All right, and then these are the questions that I wanted to go over. First of all, one, the electron of a hydrogen atom falls from level two, first excited energy level down to level one, which is the ground state. I want to know whether a photon is emitted or absorbed in that process. Um, I want you to solve for the energy of the photon in electron volts, convert it to joules, solve for the frequency, and then tell me what kind of light, is, light it is. Um, and if it's visible light, identify the color. Um, second problem, electron of mercury in the ground state, which is level A, absorbs a photon and rises to the third excited energy level, which they call level D. Um, they use letters for hydrogen, uh, sorry, numbers for hydrogen and letters for mercury to kind of distinguish between them. Um, so I want to know what's the energy of that photon in electron volts, um, convert it to joules, solve for the wavelength, and then instead of the energy for 2A, what if the electron in the ground state um, got hit by a photon of, of a nice 5 electron volts, even like even amount of five electron volts of energy instead of the energy in 2a explain what would happen in that case um if anything and uh so that's 2a and or rather two with 2a uh and then number three electron of hydrogen is um in the third excited energy level which we call level four and i want to know how much energy it would take to just barely ionize that electron um, the minimum amount of energy, and then B, if that electron absorbed a photon with one electron volt of energy, one full electron volt of energy, what would be the electron's kinetic energy as it left the hydrogen atom as a result of ionization? All right, so let's take a look at these. So we'll start with question one, which deals with hydrogen. So uh, it says electron of a hydrogen atom falls, and I said the electron, because there's only one electron in hydrogen, um, it falls from level 2, which is the first excited energy level, down to level 1, the ground state. Um, and it says, is that photon emitted or absorbed in the process? Um, and so there, there is a photon involved, first of all. You can't say, trick question, there's no photon. Yeah, there is a photon. Um, and if an electron is falling down levels, it's losing energy. Um, but energy is always conserved, and so if the end, uh, electron loses energy, it has to give off that energy. Um, and that energy is released in the form of light, in the form of a photon. So if an electron falls from higher levels to lower levels, it gives off light, um, sometimes visible light, but sometimes radio waves or ultraviolet light. Um, but it gives off the light if the electron falls down. Uh, and if it rises up energy levels, it rises up energy levels by absorbing photons. So the fact that this electron is falling downward from 2 to 1 means that it's losing energy and it's emitting that energy as a photon. So the photon is emitted. Um, next. So 1b says solve for the energy of the photon in electron volts. I'm falling from level 2 to level 1. We're going to need the chart for hydrogen to answer this question. First of all, the formula we're going to be using is E photon is EI minus EF. The energy of the photon either emitted or absorbed is the energy of the initial level minus the energy of the final level. Now those energy numbers come from the chart um, and they're actually negative on the chart, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but this is also the only formula that is not final minus initial. So it's not delta. It actually says initial minus final and it's structured that way for a reason. So let's go take a look at the chart. So let's go back. There's the question. There's the last page. We want to go all the way to page three of the reference table. 
and we want to look at the charts for hydrogen and mercury. And so it's falling from level 2 to level 1. So level 2 is negative 3.4 EVs, and level 1 is negative 13.6 EVs. Now, like I said, these energies are taken as negative, um, and energy can't be negative, but these are relative numbers. We consider that the top level, the ionization level, is zero, and all of the energy is, uh, is measured relative to that. Now you can say, well, if it's all relative, why didn't they use positive numbers? And that's because the way they structured it is that if you do, um, if you do fi uh, initial minus final, and in uh, a photon is emitted, that comes out as positive energy. That it's emitting the photon as a positive amount of energy, and we'll see that when we work out the math. Um, if the photon is emitted, it comes out as negative. We know that there's no such thing as negative energy, but you can use positive and negative energy to distinguish whether energy is being absorbed or if it's being given off. That's the same thing if we went back to mechanical energy where you're like either you're doing work or the work is being done on you. Um, it's kind of uh, that situation. So anyway, we have our numbers. Um, N equals two is negative 3.4. EVs and n equals one is negative 13.6 EVs. So let's bring those back. And there we have it. When you work the math out, we get positive 10.2 EVs for our emitted photon as the electron falls from level two to level one. Now, just to explain something um, about these very specific energies that the uh, electron is giving off um, as it falls from higher levels to lower levels, or it's absorbing as it goes from lower levels to higher levels, but they're very specific energies. Um, and that's what we mean by the quantization of, of energy. That's what we mean by quantum physics. If you've ever heard quantum mechanics or quantum physics, and people are like, whoa, mind blowing. Not really. Quantum just means that it's a specific amount. It's not a continuous amount or any amount that you like. Quantum, the fact that it's quantized means it can only be very specific amounts. I'll give you an example of quantization in your everyday life. Um, if you had money, like actual physical currency, you have dollars and cents. But the lowest amount of currency you guys could have is a penny. Go to Canada, it's a nickel. Um, but you can't have less than a penny. And you'd be like, well, you never see less than a penny. Well, actually, you do see less than a penny sometimes in gas prices. If you look at the signs on gas stations, or there are stocks that trade uh, at a level at lower than a penny. Um, so it is possible. But if you want actual physical currency, the smallest you could get is a penny. And the Canadians didn't want to deal with pennies anymore. So now they just do nickels and they round. But that's the smallest amount of currency you can get. So our currency is quantized. In the United States, it's quantized in pennies. In uh, Canada, it's quantized in nickels or, or maple leaves or whatever they call, you know, five cent pieces um, in Canada. But, um, but that's, that's an example of quantization. Now, in terms of these atoms, every atom has its own electron structure. You know that from chemistry. Um, but then they have also their own energy levels for those electrons, which is the same thing. Except that um, if you take that gas, take any one of those gases and excite it with like electricity or something, they're going to glow. But they don't glow with every single color. They only glow in the very specific colors and the very specific frequencies that the electrons give off as they fall from higher levels to lower levels. Um, I can give, I'll tell you an example. Hydrogen glows hot pink. If you have a tube of hydrogen, it glows hot pink. And the reason why is because the visible light colors that hydrogen gives off are red, um, cyan, which is like a, a greenish blue, blue and violet. Um, and the strongest of those is red by far. When you combine those all together, it looks, it looks hot pink. Um, but those are the visible light uh, photons that are emitted by the hydrogen atom as it falls from higher levels to lower levels. And if you actually took that light and you split it, uh, split it up with a prism, you wouldn't get a full rainbow. You would actually get a lot of darkness and very bright lines that have those frequencies specifically. And that is the emission spectrum for hydrogen.
The flip of that is the absorption spectrum, where if you took full white light, full continuous white light from an incandescent source, which sounds really flippin' fancy, but I can tell you right now, a regular old light bulb is an incandescent source. Um, not even a fluorescent bulb, just a regular light bulb, incandescent source. Take that light, um, pass it through cold hydrogen gas. Take the light that passed through the gas and then break that with a prism, and you'll get a rainbow with missing colors. There'll be black bands in your rainbow. And the reason why the black bands are there is because that hydrogen gas absorbed the specific frequencies that its electron needs to bump up to higher levels. The absorption spectrum matches the emission spectrum. Um, I mentioned this because this is actually where they first discovered helium. Um, when they took the light from the sun and they broke it up with a prism in a very dark room with a very good prism, they saw the rainbow that you get from the sun when you when you have take a sun catcher and you break it onto the wall or something. Um, but there are if you really have a very dark room and you really blow up that rainbow a lot, you can see that there are black bands there. Um, and you can match up those black bands, the missing frequencies, with different gases. And they were actually able to find and confirm the presence of helium in that sun's light. And helium, uh, the Greek word for sun is helios. Um, and so that's actually where they got the name helium from. And that's where they first found it. They found it in the light of the sun. These days, they're, they're not staring at prisms anymore. They actually have um, very, very precise uh, spectroscopic equipment where they can make a graph of frequency versus in intensity. Um, and they can see exactly what frequencies are present in the light and what intensity. Um, and it's like insanely precise what they can do. It's pretty remarkable. Anyway, that has nothing to do with C. Convert the energy to joules. And we're going to do that. Um, not just for funsies, we're going to need to do that in order to solve for D. To do E equals HF, that energy needs to be in joules, not electron volts. So let's convert. How many joules is to 10.2 EVs if 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is 1 electron volt? Um, and anybody who is paying attention, when we did V equals W over Q, could be like, oh yeah, the electron volt joule conversion. Everybody remembers that, right? Right. Well, that conversion's on the front page of the reference table in case you forget the number. So let's cross multiply and convert. 1.63 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Let's move on to the next guy. What is the frequency? We use E equals HF. And that formula is on page 5 of the reference table. So you don't need to memorize that equation either. Of course, H in this equation is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Everybody knows that. Psych. Um, it actually is that number, but not it's psych that everybody knows it. But everybody knows by this point that if you don't know what a constant is, there is a better than fair chance it's on the front page of the reference table. Let's go actually take a look and I'll point it out. Here we are, page one of the reference tables. And if I scroll down the list, voila, there it is. Planck's constant or Planck's constant, tomato, tomato, I don't know, but the number is right here, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. So cross multiply or divide and solve for F, and we get 2.46 times 10 to the 15 hertz. So I'm now realizing that I meant to actually say 3 to 2, not 2 to 1. Um, but let's stay with 2 to 1 because I'll tell you what that winds up being and then I'll get back to why I wanted to do 3 to 2. So let's look that up. Um, yeah, D is solved for the frequency. E is what is the type of light. So let's figure that out. So here we are back at the electromagnetic spectrum um, and we wound up with 2.46 times 10 to the 15 hertz. And so we use the spectrum, the frequency side, to see what type of light it is. Um, if I had wavelength, you're better off doing V equals F lambda, where V is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and solving for the frequency, then looking it up. But I don't have to do that. I have the frequency, so let's just go. Uh, 2.5, 10 to the 15. Let's look it up. Well, I can see that it's not visible because the top range of violet is 7.69 times 10 to the 14. 
So it's a little bit above violet, above being ultra, it is ultra violet. There it is, right there, um, just on the inside of 10 to the 15, it is ultra violet light. Ultraviolet. So a comment on that. Um, when we're dealing with hydrogen, any if you're starting from ener any energy level, 6, 5, 4, 3, or 2, and you fall into the ground state, you're going to get an, ult an ultraviolet photon no matter what. And actually, I can tell you right now, if you look at the energy level diagram for hydrogen, let's take a look for a sec. The um, All of the energy levels up top are pretty close together. So I can tell you that if you are coming from 6, 5, or 4, and then dropping down to 3, you're going to get an infrared photon. It's what happens when you drop down to level 2. That's when you get the visible light. That's the pink I was talking about before. I mentioned the colors violet, blue, cyan, and red. So, so yeah, if you fall from 6 to 2, you get a violet photon. If you fall from 5 to 2, you get a... Uh, blue photon from four to two you get a cyan photon. I know that color is green so sue me um, And then if you fall from three to two you get a red photon and it's actually a very strong red photon That's called the alpha line um, And there are nebulas out in space gigantic clouds of hydrogen that are larger than our entire solar system um, where pretty much all they're doing is just or well, not all but a lot of what they're doing is that the electrons are falling from level three to level two, from the second excited energy level to the first excited energy level, and they are emitting red light in the process. So if you pull out a telescope that is filtered for that very specific frequency, um, you can find those nebulas. Okay, now let's deal with mercury. So we have a different chart now. We're dealing with letters for our levels instead of numbers, not a big deal. Um, and uh, we're actually absorbing a photon instead of emitting one. So let's take a look. Okay, so we're dealing with mercury. It says that the electron, an electron, not the electron, mercury has more than one, an electron of mercury is in the ground state level A. It absorbs a photon of light and it rises up to the third excited energy level. That would be level D. Um, and so A says solve for the energy of the absorbed photon in electron volts. This is another EI minus EF. Let's take a look at mercury. So here's mercury on page um, three of the reference table. Page, yes, three of the reference table. And uh, yeah, because two has the electromagnetic spectrum and also the indices of refraction. So page three, there's mercury over there on the right. We're going from A to D. So A has an initial energy level of negative 10.38 EVs. And then um, D has negative 4.95 EVs. So let's bring that back. And you get negative 5.43 EVs. It's not a mistake if you absorb a photon that's considered to be negative energy. Um, so that is correct. Now we want to convert that to joules so that we can solve for the wavelength in C. So B is the conversion. So there you have it, 8.69 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And so we want to know what the wavelength is. So last time we did E equals HF to get the frequency, but don't forget that E also equals HC over lambda. Um, and we can use that to solve for the wavelength. And here's our wavelength, 2.29 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Um, just a comment, by the way, about uh, Planck's constant. That's 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34, which is a ridiculously small number, by the way. Um, Planck distances, Planck times, all of those those things are considered to be the smallest things in uh, in nature. Uh, they're even they're not even observable. They're smaller than the strings in string theory. Um, but there's so there's Planck's constant um, and the uh, speed of light. Don't forget three times 10 to the eight meters per second. But Planck's constant is also joules time seconds, um, not joules per second. Uh, those units are on the reference table, but just be aware and be careful. So there's our wavelength. Um, now let's talk about D. So to talk about D, I want to go back to the energy level diagram for mercury. Um, and it says that if you were in the ground state, um, what if it absorbed a uh, photon with simply five electron volts worth of energy, 
what would happen? Well, I can actually show this with the equation. I can tell you that the answer is nothing would happen, but let me show you why. So kind of scrolling across the reference table here, but I have E photon is EI minus EF. Um, the energy of the photon is five EVs. I made it negative because it's being absorbed. Um, the initial energy level is the ground state. That's negative 10.38 EVs. And I want to find out what the energy of the final level comes out as. So if I solve for that EF, I get that the energy of the final energy level where it winds up at is negative 5.38 EVs. Okay, fantastic. 5.38, it's right, uh, it's right uh, here. It's, um, no, it's not there. That's the point. All right, if it said 5.52, then I'd be like, oh, great, I land at level C. If I got 5.74, I land at level B. 4.95, I land at level D. But 5.38, it's not there. Um, and so the hydrogen atom is literally going to ignore that photon. It doesn't interact with it at all. It only absorbs the photons um, where it can jump from one energy level to another energy level with nothing left over. The only time you have left over is if you ionize the atom, which is actually number three. So there you go. All right, let's go back to hydrogen, but now we're dealing with um, an ionization situation and what the heck that means. So let's start a new page. All right, so if we're gonna talk about ionization, let's go back to those energy level diagrams on page three. Um, and it says that the top level for both hydrogen and mercury, um, it calls it the ionization level. For hydrogen, they call it infinity. For mercury, they call it J. I don't know why that is. Um, the, the reason why they call it infinity for hydrogen means that once the electron leaves, it's no longer in the hydrogen. See you later. So that's kind of being like infinite level. It's gone. Goodbye. Um, why they didn't do the same thing for mercury, I, I don't really know. Um, and... I know people that worked on this. I've been meaning to ask them. I'm going to have to look into that. But anyway, um, what you need to know is that the top level is the ionization level. Now, what that means is that once you ionize that electron, it's no longer held by the energy levels of that atom. Um, so the first question says, if you started at level four, um, how much energy would it take to ionize that electron to get it up to the ionization level? Well, that sounds very fancy, but I can tell you it's an EI minus EF calculation. It's really not hard at all. So EI minus EF, we're starting at level four. We're ending at level infinity. Um, we take a look at the chart and we get... So considering that the infinite level, the top level, is considered zero, when you do EI minus EF and the ionization is the final level, you put in zero for EF. And so you wind up with negative 0.85 electron volts. That's the energy that you would need for that photon um, to ionize the electron. Now, that's the bare minimum. That means that the electron left, but it's like not even going anywhere. It's like, oh, uh, like, you know, if you spent all of your energy like escaping a prison, but if you spend literally all of your energy escaping and then you get beyond the prison walls and then you fall flat on your face and pass out, what good is that? Right? You need a little bit more energy left over. Um, so that's the minimum energy is, is negative 0.85, but that's not really going to get you anywhere. Let's take a look at um, question B and why that makes a little more sense. And the prison seems like a weird analogy, except that I, I consider like you're constrained, the electron is constrained by the energy levels of the atom, just like you would be constrained in a prison. Um, so the... If the electron leaves, then it's no longer held to those levels and it is free. Um, so there you go. But anyway, B. So the electron absorbs a photon with one electron volt of energy. What would be the electron's kinetic energy if it left the hydrogen atom as a result of ionization? All right, well, we're still starting with energy level four. So E initial, that is level four. And that is negative 0.85 EV. So I know that it takes 0.85 EVs just to get that electron from level four up to the ionization level. 
Um, now, I mentioned earlier that if the photon doesn't correspond to a transition between energy levels, um, so like before I said, oh, like five electron volts, well, five electron volt photon from the ground state of Mercury is not going to land you on a level, so it's not going to work. Um, the only time it does work is if you're now ionized. So basically, it takes 0.85 electron volts to ionize that electron. And so what happens is that if you use 0.85 EVs to ionize the electron, um, now the extra energy, extra energy was not allowed before where you were constrained by the energy levels, but we're no longer constrained. The electron is free, so it's allowed to have extra energy, and that extra energy is 0.15 electron volts. And so that is the kinetic energy of the electron as it leaves. Um, that's the literal physical speed, the one-half mv squared kinetic energy of that electron. It is out of there, and it's on its merry way. So yeah, there's our little electron. Um, he's got his bag, he's ready to go. And that electron is on his way. Goodbye, see you later. And speaking of goodbye and see you later, that's the end of my example problem set. All right, hope that was helpful. Bye.